All right, so we're going to continue the discussion on variation in Chapter 6B. But before we do that, I wanted to walk through an example of how to create a box plot. So we talked about the five number summary, and uh, I showed a visual of how to, uh, or not how to do one, but I showed a visualization. You've probably seen them too on PowerPoint presentations, or if you're reading the book material, you've seen the presentations of the box plots. But the question is, how do we actually do a box plot? So um, let me see if I have any data in the TI already in my list here. Okay, so I do. So I have some data in my list one, and I have data in list two, but I'm gonna use the data from list one just to do a five number summary. So if I do the five number summary, if you recall, we go to stat, calc, one more stat, and then I'm using list one, so just do like that. And then you can see the five numbers down here. So you have your minimum, your 9.92, your quarter, your first quarter, first quartile, lower quartile, median, upper quartile, or uh, third quartile, and then you have your max value. Okay, so now let's say we actually want to plot that five number summary by doing a uh, box plot. So I'm gonna hit the second button, and underneath the Y equals up here, you see the second, and it says stat plot. So I'm gonna hit second, Y equals, and typically for your calculator to work correctly, you should have all of the plots off. Because if you're doing other things, sometimes it creates problems if you have the plots on. But in this case, they're all, they should be all off, and we're gonna click, click on number one, just hit enter on one, and then you see how it, it's highlighted to be off. We want that to be on because we wanna graph this box plot. So I'm gonna um, just toggle over to where it's on, hit enter, so that it's now flashing on on. And then you see how it shows the types. So the type that we're going to pick is the first box plot that you see that comes up on the list. So I'm gonna scroll down to type, scroll over to this one here, and then hit enter. Now, if I had chosen the second one, that means I would have like a Y value. If I choose the second one, it allows for an X input and a Y input. So it allows for a box plot and you also have some corresponding Y values. But since I'm just doing a list of one box plot, I'm going to select that one and then just hit um, enter. I'm gonna use my list one. So that's what I want. And now I'm just going to hit the button that says, now that I'm done there, my X list is L1. It's gonna, it's gonna use these little squares to do the box plot and in this case, if you have a color one, it'll do it blue. Most people have a black and white, so it's not gonna matter what color you pick. So then I'm gonna hit the button that says graph up here. Oops, and I should probably fix my um, mins and maxes. So let me go to my, let me hit second table set. And, um, or is it table set? Okay, so hit the window button right here. And then that's gonna tell us what our X mins and X maxes wanna be. Well, if you notice in the box plot, we had all positive numbers. And uh, I don't need my X to be a negative number, so it doesn't really even need, we don't even need to have a, a negative number there. So I'm just gonna pick, let's say, um, on that box plot that we did, I wonder if one of the lowest numbers that I saw in there was in the nines. So I think I'm gonna just put an X minimum of five just so I can get a gauge. And then the X max, oh, what was that X max from that example that we did? Um, 10 point something. So let me choose just uh, 12. Let me go a bit, a bit over that. And my Y min, well, I didn't really have any Y value. So this is just gonna give us a space on the, on the box plot so we can see like the Y value. But I'm just gonna put this to zero and my Y max can be, you know, let's just say two. Now I hit the graph and that should actually create our box plot. And you can mess around with it. Look how skinny it is. And that's because I made my minimum five, my maximum 10, but I can probably make it a little bit better because we can see from this box plot, and if I go to the five number summary, I can get those numbers again to get a better one. So if I toy around with these numbers here, it, it should be better. So 
Um, I went on the Y, I went from zero to five or two, so that's two spaces there. And then over here, I think I went from five to 12 or something. So I can uh, take a look at the values and that way we can see it better. So I'm gonna play around with these numbers here. So let me go back to my five number summary. So if I go to my uh, stat and if I just take a look at my five number summary again, Okay, so my min was 9.92, my uh, first quarter was 10.06, and my max was 10.38. Okay, so let's do um, let's do a min of because the min is 9.92. Let's do a min of nine, a max of of uh, let's do a max of 10.5, and that way you'll be able to see the box plot better. And so I'm going to fix that by going to window again. And we said the min, the x min was going to be nine, mm -hmm. and the x max we were going to make it ten point five. And you see that x SCL that tells you how many units you want your little boxes to be, so like one apart. But if I noticed in the what we were doing in the example that we were doing, there were decimals. So I think I'm just going to make the increments half point five. So then it really goes nine or making making nine point two five. So it goes 9, 9.25, 9.5, 9.75, 10, 10.25, 10.5. And so it'll give us a bigger spread. So let's make those increments here in quarters. And then for the um, Y max, I'll make these 0.25 as well. And we'll just go from 1 to 2. And now let's graph it. So you have to look at it the, depending on how you want it. So you see how it changed our the box plot the way it looks. And we could even make the um, even smaller, the x-axis, we can make it even smaller and have our precision or our, the amounts of um, increments in between. We could actually make those be 0 0.10 or re really as small as we want just to get a better, better visualization. Now you're looking at this and you're like, okay, well that's great and everything, but I can't see the values. Well, if you hit the trace button right here next to the graph, the trace button you just scroll over and toggle. If you toggle over using the arrow buttons, so that's telling me that's the median. I'm gonna move over to here. That's my first quartile of 10.06. There's my min of 9.92. So if you just toggle over, it'll give you the values of what those are. Okay, so again, the process is you go to second. After you have your five number summary in there, you go to second here. Make sure your plot is on, so turn your plots on, select the very first box plot, which is the fourth option over, depending on which calculator you have. Make sure your list is defaulted to L1, and then you just hit the graph button. And then you can modify again, you can modify, if you see that your box plot is like really tiny, you can modify the window by just clicking on window and you can modify those. So if we make this nine, um, 9.25, uh, make this 10.5, and I change these increments to tenths instead of uh, quarters. I can change that. I can make this a one, and I can change these to um, 0.25, and then I hit graph. And then, so it changes your box plot as you change your, your little values there. And again, how to get the values? You hit the trace button and you use the toggle arrows back and forth to see what values those are. All right, any questions on the box plot on how to create one? So now you know how to create one. You have a five, the information on how to do a five number summary. And uh, I will upload the video from uh, our previous lecture where we walked through how to do the five number summary using the Texas Instruments calculator. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to talk about today is standard deviation. So you probably had, um, you probably saw some homework problems that are asking for the standard deviation. So a lot of the homework problems this week will ask you their multiple, multiple uh, steps. It'll ask you for the five number summary, the mean, the median, five number summary, and then it'll ask you for the standard deviation.
So since we didn't learn yet how to calculate the standard deviation, you might have been stuck there. But this is probably the most common measure. When people talk statistics, they talk about statistical measures, they will oftentimes use the standard deviation to describe the variation in the data set. So we'll say, they'll say the average is um, 2.25 with a standard deviation of 0.6, or the average is 200 with a standard deviation of 50. And so that tells you how, uh, the, how the data vary in general from the average. So the standard deviation is this really big calculation and it looks straightforward right here. It's equal to the square root of the sum of the deviations from the mean squared. That entire uh, amount divided by the total number of data values minus one. That denominator is called uh, degrees of freedom, which we don't have to go into. But anyway, this particular picture looks pretty straightforward when you look at it. And the calculation is pretty simplistic. But in order to get to the sum of the deviations from the mean and then square that, that's the part that takes a lot of work. So we're going to walk through the process of how to actually get through this calculation so that you can uh, learn to do it. And it's important to know how to do this um, in the event that you don't have your Texas Instruments calculator with you on a test or a quiz. I mean, I hope you wouldn't forget it, but um, sometimes that happens. And so it's important to know the steps to do that. So we're gonna walk through each of the steps. Okay, so the first step of calculating, and don't worry, we're going to do examples of this. Standard deviation is calculated by completing the following steps. So first you calculate the mean of the data set. So you calculate the average of your data set. And usually what they have there as one, step 1A, I usually like to call step two. So I, I create a little more than just one step. First I find the mean. Secondly, I calculate the deviation from the mean. The way the book has it set up, they have it set up all in one step. Computing the mean and then find the deviation from the mean for every data value. So to me that's two steps. So the way you find the deviation from the mean is you take the data value that you're looking at and you subtract the mean. So that's my deviation. And I'll give you an example of how I usually calculate it using columns because it just is easier for me. Okay, then after we have the deviation from the means, we find the squares of those values. So in another column, in a third column, we would have the squares of all of those deviations. So if we calculated the deviation value from the mean as negative two, we would take negative two and we would square it, and that value gives us four. So finding the squares of all of the deviations. Then, on that column, what we're gonna do is after we found all the squares of the deviations from the mean, we add that column. And that's gonna be a next step. We add that entire column, all of the squares. We're adding that entire column. Next, once we have that sum of the column that we added, where we added all of the squares of the deviations, we divide that sum, we take it, and we divide that by the total number of the data values minus one. So if we have 10 data values, we're dividing by nine. If we have 15 data values, we're dividing by 14. That's our degrees of freedom step, dividing by the total number of data values minus one. And then there's one more step where we take the square root of that value. So you take the square root of the value that you had in the previous step, and that's the standard deviation. Standard deviation is the square root of the value that you get in the prior step. So we're going to do some examples of calculating the standard deviation and then we will walk through how to do this um, using our Texas Instruments calculator. Okay, so again, here are the steps to find the standard deviation of a data set. And in parentheses, I said it's recommended to set up a table. So you find the mean. Second, you find the deviation of each value from the mean. You square each deviation. Find the sum of the squared deviations. Divide the sum of that by 
one less than the number of data values, and then find the standard deviation by taking the square root. Okay, so let's do an example. And when I said um, it's recommended to set up a table, what I mean is doing something like this. Okay, so for example, we have a data, four data values here. So we have 38, 43, 45, and 44. So step one in this example would be to calculate the average. So the average of 38, 43, 45, and 44 is going to be 42.5. So that's right here, calculating the mean, step one. So you know how to calculate the average, right? You just take the number of data values, do, add them together and divide by the individual number of data values. Or you can use your calculator to enter the values. If you have you know, 15 values, it might be easier to just enter it in the list and use the stat um, tool to actually calculate the average and get X bar. Now, in step two, so we know that the mean is 42.5. Step two, what we're going to do to, is to find the deviations from the mean. So step two is called the deviation. The deviation calculation is the data value minus the mean. So you have your data value that you have in step one, and you subtract the mean. So that's why all of these values here are data value minus mean, data value minus mean, data value minus mean, and data value minus mean. Okay? So, and it's okay if you have a negative number. It just means that that value deviates 4.5 units below 38, de below the average. So 38, what that says in step two, so 38 minus 42.5 is minus 4.5. So what we're saying there is the value of 38 dev is 4.5 units less than the average. 43 minus uh, 42.5, it's positive 0 0.5, so that value deviates half of a unit above the average of 42.5, and you get the rest of it. So we have positive 2.5 and then 1.5 for the last one. So that's step two. That's what I call step two. In the book, they call it basically step one, computing the mean and then doing that. Now in step three, what I'm going to do is take those values that I got in step two and I'm going to square them, regardless if they're negative or not. So the second, I have negative 4.5, I square it. Negative 4.5 squared is negative 4.5 times negative 4.5. So that gives me 20.25. Then the second one, 0 0.5 squared is 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. That gives me 0 0.25. And then I square each of those values all the way down. Now, one thing that I mentioned here is step two check. Add up all the values to get zero. So one thing to do to check that you're on the right track with your, with your deviations is if I add all these values here, they should equal zero in step two. So if I take negative 4.5, 0 0.5, 2.5, and 1.5, that sum of that column should actually equal zero, and that tells you that your deviation calculations are correct. So that's a step two, that's what I mean by the step two check. If you add up all those values in step two, and you get zero, then you know you're on the right track. And you can move on to step three by squaring each of those values. Any questions so far on each of these steps? Mean, calculate the deviation from the mean. You can do a quick check. And then in step three, we are squaring each of those values. Now, the next step we're going to do is add the values that we got here. We're going to add all of these values in step three that we have. Those are our, those are our deviation squared values. We're going to add those, and that should give us a sum of 29. So I take that third column, and I add these all the way down to get 29. So 20.25 plus 0.25 plus 6.25 plus 2.25 is 29. That, we take that information, that's what this metric is. We take the sum of the deviations squared, okay, the sum of these squared deviations is 29. Divide by the number of data values minus 1. So 29, we have 4 data values. 4 minus 1 is 3. Take 29 divided by 3 and we get 9.67. That metric is actually called the variance in statistics. But what we want is the standard deviation. 
The standard deviation is the square root of this value. So you take the square root of that. And these, these little uh, notations are the appropriate measures for what we call uh, the population variance and the population standard deviation. Sigma squared and regular sigma. Sigma squared is called the variance, a population variance. Uh, this is the population standard deviation denoted with the sigma. Okay, so that's what those symbols are. Now, if I take the square root of the 9.67, it gives me 3.109. Okay, here's what's important. After you do all that calculation, well, what does that data dump that I just did and all those calculations mean? Well, it means that on average, whatever these values are, they're generally or typically 3.109 units away from the average or the mean of 42.5. So in general, if I look at my entire data set, I can say that on average, they tend to vary or they're typically 3.109 units away from the average mean or mean of 42.5 on average. Okay, so that's a lot of steps to get to that calculation. Okay, any questions? Because now we're going to do another example with similar process Where, for, for okay, data values. Sorry, I was okay. taking notes. Okay. Trying to make sure I got all these steps right. The, what is the n? The n minus 1. Where's the n? n minus 1 is yeah. the number of data values minus 1. So, the so if there's four data values okay. minus 1, that becomes 3. Okay. So what this is is 29 divided by 3. Okay. And, and you want to probably do the, if you don't do this correctly in your Texas Instruments and you do 29 divided by 4 and then you subtract 1, you're going to get a different value. So you want to make sure that your denominator is, you already have the denominator set. So if there's 30 data values, just divide by 29. Don't put, you know, I would not recommend you putting 29 minus 1 in your calculator or 30 minus 1 because if, it, if you're not following order of operations correctly, you'll get a different answer. Okay, so um, that's the number of data values minus one. So when we look at the uh, steps in the standard deviation, if we recall from here the steps to do that, it says to divide the sum of the square deviations by the number of values in the data set, and this is called the variance. So the number of values by one less than the number of values in the data set. So that's the n minus one that we saw. Number five, divide that sum of the square deviations. It's actually, there's a name for it. The n minus one is called degrees of freedom. Um, and you just basically divide that by the number of data values minus one. And then when we get that calculation, it's actually called the variance. Okay, so you have all the steps down. Can you go back to that one screen to have the equations again? This one? No, the other one. Because it had all the sigmas on it. That one, right there. Okay, so there's four data values. And we're going to find the, the standard deviation using the process that we did previously. So you have your four data values. What is our first step that we need to do? First step. Anybody remember? Find the, the find the average, yes. So that's gonna be your first step, is to find the average of those data values. Okay. So once we have our average, what's the next step? Calculate the deviations, right? So you got the average of 24, so that's good. The next step is to calculate the deviations from the mean, right? And if you recall, that calculation is data value minus mean. So for each one, you're going to have 18, so the data value minus the mean. So 18 minus 24, 22 minus 24, 29 minus 24, 27 minus 24. And it's okay if those values are negative. So each of those data values minus the mean is going to be our next step. Okay. 
And then you can do a quick check once you've done that to make sure that the sum of those values equals zero. And that's a quick check to make sure that you're on the right track. So 18 minus 24 gives us negative 6. 22 minus 24 gives us negative 2. 29 minus 24 gives us 5. And 27 minus 24 gives us positive 3. If I add those values up, negative 6 minus 2 plus 5 plus 3, it's really negative 8 plus 8, and that gives me 0. So I'm on the right track there with my deviations. The next thing, does anybody remember the next step, the next column? We're going to take those values and then square them. So now I'm going to be looking at negative 6 squared, negative 2 squared, 5 squared, and 3 squared in my next column. So negative 6 squared is 36, because that's negative 6 times negative 6. Negative 2 squared is negative 2 times negative 2. Now, if you're putting it in your calculator and squaring it, you have to make sure to put the parentheses around the negative 6. Otherwise, it'll take it 6 squared, and then it'll t take the opposite of that. But if, the, but if the negative's inside the parentheses, then it takes it as that whole value squared. So negative 6 times negative 6. If it's not in parentheses, it'll give you negative 36. So negative 6 squared is 36, negative 2 squared is 4, 5 squared is 25, and 3 squared is 9. So now that we have those values, we sum that column. That's really important. That's a really important part of the process. Summing that column gives us a value of 74. And we know that we have a total of four data values. So now that we have that total of four data values, we finish off our calculation by taking the sum of that third column divided by the number of data values minus 1. So the number of data values is 4, so we basically are taking 74 divided by 3 to give us our second to last calculation. So it gives us a really long repeating number of 24.6667. So 74 divided by 3. And then our final step, step is to take the square root of that variance or the square root of that value that we had. So we're not done yet. We've got to still take the square root of that, that value. And it comes out to about 4.97 when we take the square root of the value that we had in the previous step. So what that means again, in the interpretation of that, is that on average, these values that we had, these four values, tend to be about 4.97 units away from the average or the mean of 24 that we calculated. <coughs> so that tells about, talks about how the data varies. On average, the data values vary about 4.97 units away from the average of 24 or the mean of 24. So here we're just creating my data values, and I'm going to call these uh, six test scores on a recent test, hypothetical test scores. So these are my data values, 88, 80, 92, 90, 88, and 76. So our first step is to calculate the average. So calculate the average, and what do you get when you calculate the average? Eighty five point six, okay. So now we have decimals. Okay, so eighty five point six is my mean. Now my second column I'm gonna do my deviations, right? My deviation is going to be my data value minus the mean. So I have data value minus the mean. And I'm going to do that for every single one. So it's going to be 88 minus 85.6, 80 minus 85.6, 92 minus 85.6, 90 minus 85.6, all the way down to 76. I'm going to do that same thing for all of these. 
Okay, so now I have data value minus mean, so that's the deviation, right, of each of those values. Now, just a quick check, if I sum up these values, do I get zero? No. And you're not getting, are you getting close to zero? You're getting point 0.4. Okay, so it's probably due to rounding, but let's just double check. So the reason that we're so close to zero but not quite is because the average. So if we had rounded this right here, instead of 85.6, round it maybe two digits to 85.67, and then change all of these, you'll see that you'll get closer to zero. Okay. But that's good enough. Now, pay attention when you're doing the rounding, though, in um, the Pearson on the Pearson homework, because that'll be specific, and it'll tell you to round to the hundreds or the tenths or whatever. In this case, we rounded ours to the tenths. We didn't actually even round it to the tenths because 85.6 isn't appropriate rounding. It should, if we rounded it to the tenths place, it should have been 85.7, but that's okay. So we'll just assume that that average is correct, 85.6, and uh, we'll go, go through all of these. And now let's go through the next process. Uh, we're going to square each of those values, right? So 2.4 squared, negative 5.6 squared, 6.4 squared, all of those. So let's square all of these values in our next column. So these are going to be the deviations squared. So 2.4 squared, negative 5.6 squared, 6.4 squared, 4.4 squared, 2.4 squared and negative 9.6 squared. So we're going to square all of those values and put them in the corresponding column. Okay, so now we've squared those values and now our next step, and again, the squiggly line just means approximation, um, especially since I didn't uh, approximate the mean correctly. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add these values down. Does anybody have a value that a sum for this yet? So we're going to sum those. That's going to be key. Uh, it's going to be very important to calculating our standard deviation. Okay, now we'll take that sum and we're going to divide by the number of data values minus one. So if I take that sum, I have six data values. So I'm going to take that, divide by five. Okay, so now we take that value. 189.6, we divide by 5, and that's going to give me approximately 37.92. We're not done yet, though. That's not the standard deviation. The standard deviation is the square root of that value. So you take the square root of 37.92, and that gives you approximately, we'll round it, two digits, 6.16. Is that what you got? Six point one six. Okay, well what does that mean? That means that on average, these test scores, these six test scores, tend to vary or tend to lie six point one six units away from the average of eighty five point six that we got on average. Again, it's just an average expression of the variation. It's a lot of work to get to that final value. When we did the, the values, what we're going to do, so our, our standard deviation that we get when we do this um, in our Texas instrument, it's going to be slightly different, again, because of the rounding when we did the mean over here. When we started off with 85.6 and did all of our data values, it's going to be slightly different when we do it in our, in our calculator. So I'm going to show you how to input these same values to get the standard deviation, all this process that we did, and how the calculator will actually calculate all of that um, for us. And so we're going to take these data values that we have, that we wrote down, and we're going to put them in our calculator. Okay, so let me toggle to the um, Texas Instruments. Okay, 
So now you have your calculator. We're going to go to um, stat and we want to edit the list that we have in there. So let me go ahead and clear out what I have. I just don't want any values. I just want to clear out all the junk. Okay. So my list one, what I'm going to do is enter those values that we just did. So 88, 80, 92, 90, 88, and 76. And we're going to follow the same process that we followed when we did our five number summary. So you go to stat, calc, one bar stats, and I'm using L1, so I'm just going to click enter, enter, all the way down. And so you're going to say, we got the same information that we have, we've had before. Okay, so X bar, which is our average, is 85.6667, okay? Now, what we're going to do is if you go down, you remember we got uh, the standard deviation of 6.16. So the value that you want to look at, and again, as I mentioned, we're going to be slightly off because we rounded our average to 85.6. The standard deviation is this value that you have right here where it says SX. That is 6.25. 6.25. So we have not only our five number summary values in there, but you can actually get your standard deviation from here as well. So 6.25 is what we get for our standard deviation. And so what it does is it goes in and it takes these values that you have and it calculates all of that information that we did on that sheet and it does all of these steps to give you the standard deviation. So let's uh, take a look at another example, one of the ones that we did earlier. <clears throat> The very first example that we did on standard deviation, and we got an, uh, a standard deviation of 3.109 using these values. So I'm going to enter this, these four values. I'm going to stat, edit. I want to clear my list one out. And now I'm going to do 38, 43, 45, and 44. So those are four values. And when we did this in class, we got 3.109, so let's see how far away we are from that if we do it in our Texas Instruments. 3.109. Okay, so 3.109 is the same standard deviation that we got when we calculated it by hand in our first example. So you want to grab the information. Again, X bar, the very first one, is the average. The summation of X is just basically adding the total number of data values that you have, adding them together. The summation of x squared is 7254, so if you were to square those values. And then you have your standard deviation, which is 3.109. It's not too bad, right? Doing it, it's a lot easier to do it in the calculator than it is to, um, than it is to actually do it by hand. Okay, so, the hardest part about these problems is to actually um, put it in your calculator correctly and make sure you have all of the values. Now, when you're doing that, one of the things you can do, again, is by checking your uh, list. You see here it shows um, L1, so list one, the first data value. So you know that you've entered one data value. So you can actually look in parentheses to see what list value you have. See, so that one is value two that I've entered. So if you're like, wait a minute, you're, you're done entering. Let's say you're done entering at 40, and so you have four values and you're done, but the book says that there's actually five. So you're missing a value. So then you go back and take a look at where you missed that value. Okay, so we'll do one more example and set you off. 